afternoon and welcome to this edition of Eyewitness Newsmakers. I'm your host, Doug Miller. On March the 23rd, chemists Stanley Pons and Martin Fleischman rocked the world of science. They announced that they had achieved cold fusion in their laboratory at the University of Utah. The promise of a cheap and a plentiful energy supply grabbed the world's attention. And the two chemists were swamped by the news media, questions about this big development. Finally, they had to stop talking about it and spend time working on the very science they had created. So we're happy to have both gentlemen with us today to talk about the progress of coal fusion at this point. Dr. Stanley Pons with the University of Utah and Dr. Martin Fleischman with England Southampton University and also a research scientist now at the University of Utah. Gentlemen, we're pleased to have you with us. Also joining us today is Eyewitness News science specialist Ed Yates. Ed, of course, uh, has covered a lot of science stories over the years, but few, Ed, you have to admit, compare with the story of coal fusion. In fact, a uh, little poll in the newsroom here uh, just recently indicated that it was the top story of 1989. Yes, I, I don't, don't think Dr. Fleischman and Dr. Pons are aware that the, in that vote that it has become the number one story uh, of, the, uh, of the year. <laughs> Ed, uh, in terms of the, the development of this story over the years and uh, the, the aspects of it that you followed, it, it must have been maybe one of the more challenging stories in your career. Oh, by, by, by any standard, uh, Doug, I think uh, the artificial heart was a pronounced story in this area. But uh, the story of Dr. Fleischman and Dr. Pond's uh, uh, research development has, uh, has taken the world by storm and it has developed a controversy that is unequaled. Uh, certainly the artificial heart was controversial, but certainly not as not by any de degree that this story has become. Gentlemen, it's been a couple of months since we've had an opportunity to visit with you uh, to any degree. You've uh, sort of kept yourselves at arm's length from the media and from the world that wants, uh, that hungers for information about this, uh, the status of the experiment. Where are you now? What's developed in the last couple of months? Well, in the last two months, we have uh, devoted ourselves to finishing the major paper, the key paper, uh, the definitive paper in, uh, that we started. Uh, we. We're now ending that period, and we are, uh, we'll be sending that out in the next few days. So uh, uh, perhaps I could add there, we, because of the controversy which was generated, we felt obliged to do complete two further complete sets of yeah. tests. Experiment. And that was completed in the end of October. Well, let me just ask you gentlemen about this, uh, <clears throat> this new paper that you're about to publish. Calorimetry was, was one of the areas that was highly debated early on in this experiment, and I would assume in this paper that you have answered and addressed all of your critics as far as the calorimetry is concerned. Is, is that one of the key points in this paper? We've been careful to answer as many uh, of the criticisms that have been made. Uh, we, I don't think anything particularly new has been added other than, uh, to the paper uh, than we gave, than, uh, I mean, particularly new in, in, that in the respect that uh, we determined uh, our results by the same methods. We have sharpened them up, we have determined, you know, the maximum aerial limits that we could possibly have had in those experiments. Uh, and that, in that respect, that's, uh, that will be new items in the paper. And I guess we should, for, for the viewer, uh, mm. explain that when we talk about calorimeter, we're talking mm. about the technique used, specific technique used to measure the heat. There is, uh, if I could just add something to that, there is, in this particular research, a need to test a very large number of samples. So, no matter how much money you have got, you've got to go for a reasonably inexpensive method of carrying out the experiment. And what we have succeeded in showing, at least to our satisfaction, is that by uh, combining an inexpensive method of measurement with very sophisticated computer analysis, you can, in fact, get very precise heat data. Dr. Fleischman, do you believe that you have silenced the voices of the critics that have challenged uh, your experimentation to this point with perhaps the new documentation? Well, we hope we shall settle a number of the questions which have been raised. I think that uh, the polarization there has been makes it very unlikely that we can expect to see everybody, uh, 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 suddenly everybody to be convinced uh, by our experimentation. I, I think this will one take some time. One wants to make a prediction. One would say that uh, the major criticism early on was that the method was too simple uh, and not precise enough. And I, if we wanted to make a prediction, I think they will now say, well, it's too complicated. <laughs> <laughs> simple but complicated. I mean, it's, it's, complete. it's as complete as we know how to make it. I, I think it's, uh, uh, do, do you regret, Dr. Fleischman, on March 23rd that you made that comment about that, that you felt it was so stupid, the experiment, that you didn't want to proceed with it? 
Has that um, come back to haunt you? <laughs> I think, yes, under the, uh, under the pressure of events, one makes statements which one comes to regret. <laughs> I think we are relatively inexperienced in uh, uh, guarding, making guarded <laughs> comments. We are both inclined to brush in. <laughs> we, we had simply had five years uh, practice with this method and this technique, and uh, at that point we were very mm -hmm. confident that people would see very quickly. Are there, still the are there still surprises in this level of experimentation? Uh, you, you say you've done another round of experiments, another round of documentation to complete that process. Have there still been some discoveries, some oh, yeah. ahas at this point? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. What have you found new in the last two months? I, I think the major thing we're finding is that the metallurgical properties of the metal is, uh, is an extremely important uh, variable in the, in the success of the experiment. That's the and catalyst uh, element? Uh, the rods themselves, the, the, exact the electrodes history. themselves, the, the history of the uh, metal itself. And I would add, because we uh, felt compelled to continue experiments over very long durations, our standard experiment time is yeah, three, three months, months yeah. which of course scientists would, uh, doing measurements of heat would not contemplate. But right. because we have continued our experiments for such a long period of time, we found this new phenomenon that our birth in the production of heat. So there is a totally new phenomenon which was discovered because of the con continuation of the experiments. And at this point, at the conclusion of this round of experiments, what new bottom line findings other than the burst of heat? Anything of particular significance to, uh, to adding further credi credibility to the reaction process? I think uh, there's numerous instances now of uh, high levels of sustained heat, not, not bursts, but high levels of uh, of the baseline sustained heat. If, if we had to, to put this into some kind of perspective, it would be safe to say now, even with a critic, that there is no question on the confirmation of the heat, excess heat output, but the big debate still remains on what is producing all of the extra heat. What is the avenue, whatever Absolutely. this avenue is that is producing heat? Absolutely. That is the only unknown at this point. You see, uh, you've got to put yourself in our shoes, and uh, the viewers have to put in our, themselves in our shoes. We expected to find a conventional nuclear reaction path. And, what, uh, uh, and this is the line we pursued. And what we found in various cycles of experiments was that we had a great deal of heat and very few nuclear products of the conventional kind. But they were there. They were there in a very minor amount. Now, there must be other reaction paths. But of course, it is extremely difficult to find what those reaction paths are because uh, even the amount of heat you get corresponds to a very small chemical change. So the chemistry required is of a fantastic level of difficulty.